special guest. Um, but our first special guest on this outdoor endeavor is the fabulous Ziva Blay all Yay. the way from New York City. What? That USA. got my credit. I just took all the credibility <laughs> away by <laughs> introducing it that way. You're okay. like, I'm going to go. I'm going to leave. Uh, Goodbye, Women at Work. Yay. It's just Amanda now. That's how all of our episodes start. We just go, okay, well, that's it. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Ziva is a film, what we say? Film crew, you say broad span film right here. What would you say about yourself? How would you describe yourself? I mean, I guess I would describe myself as like a cultural critic. That's a great description. Thing. I thought you were going to say icon, and I was really... <laughs> that cool. too, that too. And I also would say like my sub um, title is like Spice Girls fanatic. You love the Spice Girls. Because it's kind of like my job to love the Spice Girls. Did you? Oh, so you, Explain. you were like right in the heart of it when they were Spice Girls. Yeah, I was like in the thick of it. I had like my leopard print dress and my platform mm -hmm. sneakers and I was playing no fucking games. I love so, how nice. I asked it though, like it was 9-11, like where were you when Spice World happened? <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag never forget. Never Hashtag forget. Zig -a -zig -a. So when did you decide that you wanted to start looking at society and culture basically from a critical standpoint? Hmm. Why are you asking all these hard questions though? And I have an enormous hard questions and I'm like, oh, so you were like Spice Girls? Like I'm the, <laughs> I'm, <know>. no. <laughs> I'm that one, but that's cool that you went to school and stuff. Uh, okay. <laughs> Only for a year. Well, wait, what was the uh, When did I start thinking critically? I mean, it's interesting because I feel like I've always kind of had that in the back of my head. I've always kind of been really, like, questioning of, of the, the art that I, you know, consume or whatever, even as a little girl. Like, the, the Spice Girls, you know, it's funny because I have a podcast called Two Brown Girls, which I guess we'll talk about later. But one of the things we talked about on the first episode was, was the Spice Girls. And what was so important about them for me was that as a young girl, a young black girl, to see, you know, a black woman in the Spice Girls who was not like the typical, stereotypical black woman that I usually saw, but someone who was kind of doing her own thing, that was really important for me. So I feel like I've always kind of been critical in that respect about do I see me, do I see other types of people, because um, it's not necessarily about seeing someone who looks like Ziba, but just like not seeing, for instance, Gwyneth Paltrow five million times, and you know, all, all the places, and so that's really been what I've always kind of be, been aware of, and I've just, in, I guess in the past few years, really have made my writing kind of hinge on that. What you guys talked about, like how Girls was kind of the catalyst for this podcast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you do criticize, like, in, not in, a, in an unfair way, but you do offer a critical eye to girls, especially during the season, especially on your own blog. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I think that's important because I feel like in, in terms of race, in terms of calling certain things out, there's always a sense that people will come back and say, like, you know, like, why does it all have to be about race? And, like, it's not racist. And it's, like, what people have to understand, especially with what we do and what I try to do in my criticism, is that I, I'm not here as the uh you know the person who says that's racist and that's not racist like it's not my place to do that but i do think we should have a conversation about the rain <laughs> and, <laughs> and how amazing that is it doesn't have to be falling yeah it's like i we're not covered. i think we're covered in trees and power lines yeah. so this yeah. is great yeah it could come one way or another <laughs> So back to what we were saying about, yeah. you, like, first, you st it started with the Spice Girls, you and cultural criticism, yeah. but that's important. It was at an age where, yes. like, you were able to actually, you know, identify yourself. And that's when I think a lot of girls start to question their Definitely. whole belief foundation. Yeah. Their whole, like, world of you, like, who yes. am I? Yeah. Yes. The, world, the words girl power were, like, at the time you're just saying it as a kid, like, girl power, but, like, that's, you should just be saying yeah, it and huge. getting used to that mentality yeah mm -hmm. i mean not to let's not go into spice girls land but just to quickly say the spice girls are often kind of like you know called out for being like fake feminism or like you know like it was a gimmick but i feel like as you said for a 10 year old girl to be saying girl power 
that's all you need right there. When she gets older, she can get into like the heavier stuff, but just to have the idea that like I am like a fierce, lovely girl and no one can talk shit to me, whatever, that is like really important. To uh, add yeah. to this, to, like speaking of brown girls, I think we were talking about your podcast when we actually yes. got you off. Yes. It was girls and Lena Dunham that you yeah. really started to get like. Yeah, and I think I guess I, what I was talking about is that what yeah what we do in, in calling that out it's not yeah not to say that we are the um we decide what's right and what's wrong what's racist and what's not it's just that we think there should be a wider discussion with Lena Dunham and with girls there was a sense that like saying anything like we should you should be happy that women are on TV to begin with like you should just be happy that there's a show with four female leads. And yeah, that's really great, you know, to have someone who's directing and writing her show. But don't tell me that just because, you know, a woman is directing and writing a show that I shouldn't, you know, question the fact that she has no people of color on this show. I feel like it's way more complex than just, you know, one thing or the other. And I feel like being, you know, cognizant of the fact that, like, race and gender and class and all these things intersect is really important for the for the conversation we're having so yeah <laughs> you do work to make it less scary for everybody like interesting like less of like that. one of this vast like thing it's like no it's something that we can talk about every mm -hmm. day yeah. yeah i think it's hard because people look at it as they they have a quota to fill they have to have a, a certain amount of people race but that shouldn't even be a thought <laughs> it should just be like hey whoever is the best for the job let's yeah. do this yeah yeah I mean? yeah I, and 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 yeah. I, but I do think like whoever's the best for the job should do this, but then also being aware, because like, I feel like that's also an excuse that a lot of people make. It's like, well, we just got the best guy for the job, and he just happened to be white. So, <laughs> yeah. but, you know, that's literally always. Yeah, yeah. Always. I don't know. Because I'm just to be an English man. I can't, I can't understand. You know, but, yeah. like, like, even when like, we talk about Doctor Who and, like, how, like, that was, like, Stephen Moffat's, you know, answer was, like, well, Peter Capaldi was the best. It was, like, Peter Capaldi was the only person you looked at to play the doctor. So, what are you talking about? So that's kind of, you know, but it's all, I like that you said that it's, we make things like less scary for people because I never really thought about that. I, I never really figured talking about these things is something to be scared of, but you're right because we get a lot of questions from people, you know, saying like, oh, well, I never thought about this that way, but you brought that up and it's really interesting. Can you expound upon this? And I'm like, sure, I'd love to. And it's like, it feels good to like kind of have that, um, have that power. No. That is powerful. Yeah, yeah, that is, is powerful. a powerful thing yeah. to have, especially because it's like when opening up a, race, a dialogue about race. It's not supposed to be scary. It's yeah. just supposed to be something that like we should be able to freely talk about and then freely like stand up for things that are right and stand up for, and stand, and stand up for things that are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> not stand up. For, I was just kidding. Do you guys and like the sleep back here? Okay, yeah. you do. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of cool if you want to think about it this way. You're going to be someone's Mel B. The, the way she was, she was real. So you I are. think that's really cool. <laughs> Should we uh, go to rapid fire questions? Yes. Are you ready? Where do you want your cultural criticism to go? Where do you want, where do you want to see your career? Do you want to be writing your own movies? I don't know if I would necessarily be interested in, in following that path, but I do know that um, I definitely want to be more part of the African film industry. I'm actually um, working on a thesis right now on Nollywood film, um, on the, the depiction of women in Nollywood film, cool. and I'm thinking about possibly expanding that into something larger, a larger project. I don't know what yet. What's your favorite Spice Girl song? <laughs> no, that, that's very important. No, that's very important. Um, my favorite Spice Girl song ever is uh, Viva Forever, which oh. just, you know, when that song comes on, it's just tears just start to roll in, you know. Oh Favorite Spice Girls scene in the movie Spice World. Ooh. And they, they had to like do some gig in Italy and there was like a discrepancy about like what like the dancers were supposed to wear and the night they performed like the dancers were wearing like little speedos and the guy the manager was like, No, they can't wear speedos, like we want a classy show. So the guy was like, We'll have a compromise. And on the night that they're performing, the dancers are wearing these two piece suits that like, sparkly and then they turn around <laughs> and it shows that their asses are like they have assless pants. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of a seminal moment in my life as a young girl because I was like, huh. Reverse sexism. Yeah. A little yeah, bit of misandry yeah. up in here. Yeah. But not actually misandry because that's what I use when people are being idiots. I'm like, oh, <laughs> misandry. <laughs> but like for real. Who yeah. inspires you? The one person who really inspires me would be my sister, um, Zandale Blay. She's also a writer. She's actually a fashion writer, so it's like because cool. I come from a family of journalists. My father and my mother, like everyone, has been in journalism, um, and 
Zandale is about six years older than me, and just like watching the tra trajectory of her career and what she does, and like the integrity that she has, especially in the fashion industry, which is like a hot mess, um, has always been like really inspiring, and just like how she keeps herself grounded and makes money, which is also pretty nice. That's awesome! Women That's inspiring awesome. women. Yay. Yes. This is fantastic. I'm so glad that we got you on the show. And if you go to two brown girls. Dot co. That's the blog and the podcast and everything. And uh, thank you guys so much. For thank thank you, you for coming. Yay! I have like the one really cowlick good. now to last me through the rest of my <laughs> life. Perfect. It's you now. That's it's just, you. This That's is your new who identity. I am. This is like, please remember me. I'm going to turn into a ghost. <laughs> the true Hollywood story and Donahue spotted with a cowlick. And I know just my cowlick. It gets its own.